welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Ellie Campster. And me, Liam Underwood. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about Brain Dead because this is our super spooky Halloween special. Ooh. Oh dear, here come the scary things. Yep, all the spooks. All the spooks, um, except we chose like a horror comedy. <laughs> yeah. So, not that spooky. No. But that's okay, because sometimes Halloween isn't that spooky. Most of the time Halloween isn't that spooky. Yeah. Uh, before we get to that, though, we're going to talk about the stuff that we've done recently in yeah, Catching Up how you usually with say it, Ellie Liam. and Liam. Very smooth. Thank you. I like that you looked confused with what you were saying. Like I could see the moment you said it, you were like, I don't know what this is. Yeah, <laughs> this is how I say this. I, you know when you start talking and then you, your brain sort of catches up and is like, yeah. you now need to talk your way out of this, <laughs> yeah. which I think Work I did ra- seamlessly. Oh, yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Okay, before we start with catching up, right, I'm yep. going to give you like a nice sort of lead in to your big news with the catching up. Big news? Well, <laughs> news, shall we say. Okay. Um, friend of the show, Jason, tweeted us. Yep. Um, well, he, he quote tweeted our episode that went up recently. Yeah. Uh, our most recent episode saying, I'm really enjoying this week's show. The hair incidents continue. Which I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about the, uh, the whole waxing palava. Yeah, and the fact and that you've, you've... You've now got a waxing story. It, uh, sorry, I haven't now got a wax. There's, there's, I, I'm not going to play into your lies on the show, Liam. I got waxed before holiday, but we just forgot to talk about it last last time because I was so upset by your story. Yeah, but what what I mean is like you have a waxing story to share. Yeah, but you said now like it's like this brand new thing. It's not a brand new thing. I, I, I got. It's waxed new then. to our listeners. Fine. I also got waxed. There we go. So. Mine's Jason? fine. I've got I've got no body scars. <laughs> I, I, it was all fine. It hurt a little bit, but what, what, I got c- waxed. Because you got more wax than I did. Because I only did like the top half. Yeah, and I think you did, did legs as well, right? Yeah. What hurt? What bit hurt the most? Legs. Is there like a certain area on the legs, or just uh, all of it? I guess the ankles were quite painful. Yeah. Back of the knees was a bit painful. Oh, I can imagine that not being fun. Yeah, like, you know, it's, it's basically like the areas you would expect to be, but like areas that aren't meant to be hurt. What about like the, the inner thigh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I but there's imagine. less hair there anyway, like... Yeah, true. I, I, I spoke to Kat about the potential of me getting my legs waxed, and she was like, don't, it would look weird. So... Why would it look weird? I don't know, I think she likes that I've got hairy legs for some reason. They are very. I I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast before, but um, in a a graphics class at secondary school, I won uh, hairiest legs of the class competition. Was that a proud moment for you? It was. We had a teacher, Mr. Goldberg, shout out who uh, I think he was like a drunk. I think. Yeah. Um, also, was if he was getting you guys to show him your legs? Was no, he, a he bit... wasn't the judge. This is the thing, right? It was a class where anarchy would always break out because he'd sort of walk in, be like, "I don't care," and just sit down, and then we were just left to our own devices for an hour. Right. Got you. Yeah. So, sounds like a drunk. Yeah. So we obviously uh, started having fun competitions, like you know, obviously like staring contests. Uh, of course. Hairiest legs, obviously. Uh, various See, other you games. say obviously that one is more surprising that's not uh, a... don't forget I went to an all boys school yeah so I'm just saying like if it was a mixed school my competition would only be like maybe like 10 to 15 other students but this was me in like a class of like 25 to 30 absolutely dominating so yeah, but I do feel like I still feel like the the idea of a bunch of boys being like let's see who's got the hairiest legs is a little bit weird just roll up your, your trousers a little bit up to the knee. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not the showing of the legs. I don't know. The whole thing just has a little vibe to it. I don't know. I mean, it's an all boys school. The whole thing had a vibe to it. Did was there a lot of like? Because everyone always talks about that, like, oh, at these all sex schools, you know, oh, people, it's young, oh, pubescent children. No, children is the wrong word, maybe when we're having this conversation. But uh, young, young adults, <laughs> young adults. Yeah. All these. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had an all girls school right next door, so. It, that's once, so once, weird. That's so, why did why wasn't it just one mixed school? I honestly don't know. Like it, we literally shared the same like field. 
Well, there was a big field with a path running down the middle, and the boys yeah. had to stay on one side and the girls on oh the other. Oh my god. It was very <laughs> weird. That's Up so until weird. like age 15, it's so like year 10, when you could like leave the school premises for lunch, and then, ah, oh, that's when all of the mixing happened. For, for other kids. I had a, a dabble. <laughs> I was I yeah. was a Lothario of sorts, I'll have you know. Not really. I dated a girl for two weeks, and then it went really going anywhere, and her best friend was, like, well up for it. So I dumped her and went out with her best friend for two weeks, but then she was going, like, way too fast for me, and it just freaked me out a bit, so I dumped her as well. But in the process of all that happening, it just ruined their friendship. <laughs> oh, good. I think you've told me this before. Yeah, you're, and you're sort of a scum. You are the scumbag in the story. Yeah. Anyway, do you know what though? The 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 best friend, the second girl in the story, now has a kid pregnant with another kid. So dodged a bullet there. Yep, sure you did, Liam. Sure. Yep. I don't know about the friend. Um, this is the kind of thing that old people say in the pub when they're like just like a lonely old guy who never leaves the pub, and he's like, she she's got grandkids now. What an idiot! Yeah. <laughs> oh, pour me another beer. Except I'm not in a pub, so nope, winning. You're chatting to me over the internet. Yes. Well, not just you, but also our tens of listeners. That's true. The tens of listeners do. And I, you know, I need to throw in these these things every now and again because one, it's testament to how much I've grown as a person. Yep. And two, you need all the help you can get with people like thinking you're the favourite. So I have to like demean myself. So you get more accolades. No, to be fair, we've got, also, we've got back into like a, a... We're both... the. I think we're both back in a sort of... They don't seem to be favourites. We've not had too many polarising episodes recently. The last episode was called Liam Hates Women. <laughs> which... <laughs> Forgot about that. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised there hasn't been more feedback on it, in all honesty. It's because it's us. People know it's... Also, the, did you read the description? No. In the description, I'm very much... There's, I think in all caps, I'm like, the title is a joke. Please listen to the episode. Don't assume Liam hates women. Uh, I mean, I don't mind if they assume it because they'll listen to the episode and they'll realise he can't hate women. He's a Lothario. Well, I'll listen to this episode and realise that at least. So, you know. I mean, my, my high school days weren't exactly awash with the ladies, shall we say, but there were dabbles. Right, cool. So... Which, you know, for an all-boys school, I'm counting that as a win. Yep, fair enough. Um, speaking of, like, terrible teachers... Yes. Did you ever have any, like, awful, awful teachers at school? It depends on what you mean by awful. Like, I had teachers that I didn't like. What I mean by... Can I give you an example of what I mean by awful? Well, uh, uh, yeah, other than the guy who uh, would sit at the front yeah, of the class yeah. and not Re- teach. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I have more than that as an example. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... In, like, year 10, when in, in the UK, you have to pick your, like, GCSEs, yep. which is, like, the big exam you have to do at the end of high school for our abroad listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in year 10, you didn't have to do RE, religious education. Yep. Then in year 11, they made it mandatory that you did have to do it. Oh, right. So we suddenly had to learn, like, two years of RE in one year. Yep. Um, and we were given a new RE teacher to do this who we found out um, through our classes, he was going through a divorce because his wife didn't have sex with him. Oh, that feels like a weird amount of knowledge This is the kind have. of... This is the calibre of teacher that I had, where he would come in and uh, everyone would sit towards the back of the class. It wasn't a big class. There was maybe like 10, 15 people in it. He'd sit on one of the desks at the front just with the saddest look on his face and we just hear about the latest trauma that he oh was going God. through in the past week. The fuck was your school? It was awful. I did not pass my RE exam. I can imagine. <laughs> you just wrote an essay did, about I the don't horse. Think, yeah, I don't think we actually at, ever, at any point ever cracked open a textbook. It was literally... Because the other thing is, I was in a class with people who would deliberately sort of say to the teacher, like, oh, how's it going, sir? Yeah. Is it... You're doing better this so they would kind of to get it, like yeah. go so to they could get out about of it as well doing class yeah which f- to be honest it was already i didn't give a no, shit yeah, i was so. happy to do that yeah i mean so like bad teacher wise i think i think the the worst one i had and she was probably like a fine teacher for everyone else but i had this teacher yeah. in 
She was my English teacher for a year, but she was like also an RE teacher or something. You know when yeah. teachers do a bit of that like yeah. cross teaching, whatever. But she um yeah. at a pair she didn't like me, and I genuinely don't know why. Like as a kid in school, I wasn't <laughs> to the no, what? <laughs> well. I was, <laughs> who could imagine why no but I mean like so to my friends I'm a dick but like to teachers I've always got that thing with like yeah. authority where I'm like oh you've got to do what the teacher says like I was always the kid that was like yeah I'm not going to storm out of the classroom because we're in some sort of rebellion I'll just sit here and do the class but like yeah I never got in trouble yeah, at school but she just didn't like me like just found me yeah. irritating or something but uh, we had a parents evening yeah. so where the parents came in to talk to the teachers and she yeah. she was talking to my dad and she was like yeah, well, it's just, you know, obviously she doesn't read very much. And my dad yeah. went, sorry, what? And the teacher was like, well, yeah, well, the reading level's just just not quite there. And <laughs> my dad then turned around to her and went, right, well, I have to, every night, I have to make sure that her light is off because she's usually up reading till 1am, finishes yep. more books than most kids I know. How can she have a bad reading level? And the teacher was just like, Oh, um, yeah, oh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know then. That doesn't make sense. And I was like, yeah, she just hates me for, for no reason. She's literally just making up stuff yeah. about how I'm a bad reader. Like, I'm the, kid that, I'm the kid that read Lord of the Rings in, like, end of primary school and was like, these are really good. <laughs> we should keep reading books like this. I did that as well. Yeah, you got to. So the thing is, yeah, well, I didn't have internet as well during those days. Like, I didn't get internet until I was about 14. Yeah, well, so I mean, back, back I then it was what? It was... You rolled up a bit of papyrus into a reed tube and drifted it down the river. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Send nudes. But, um, I, yeah, I I was reading like Discworld books before I went to secondary school. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I, I, I was probably a similar student to you at school, yeah. I think, where like I, I, up until year 10 when my rebellious phase kicked in, which was minor, but like still, I was very like don't misbehave. I only ever got detention once because I wouldn't stop talking to my friend in class. Yeah, I always got the <laughs> talks too much. That was always my thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, because like, I read a lot, it was that annoying thing where it just, because I was a good reader, it put me ahead of the rest of the class for like every single subject. Yeah. Even if I wasn't particularly good at the subject. Yeah. Um, yeah. So probably the worst teacher we ever had was a substitute music teacher who. Um, was on like the little stage at the front of his class, looked down, thought that he saw the kid in the front row, uh, in the music teacher's words, pleasuring himself, got so irate at this, he bit through a cassette tape, kicked a chair off the stage at the student, and then locked himself in a cupboard in the room and wouldn't come out until the deputy head came. What? <laughs> yeah, that was brilliant. I mean, even so, even if he did see what he thought he saw, yeah, that's not the correct reaction to that. <laughs> no, and bit through a cassette student, tape. Like, yeah, and so the best bit that the defence that the student had was, and these are the exact words: "I was just having a good old scratch." <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I had an interesting school time. Yeah, what the fuck. My rebellious stage kicked in in year 10 when about 15 of us out of a year group of like a couple of hundred yeah. um, were called to the library where the head teacher was like, okay, so you're like the top of the year. Uh, we're expecting you to do great things and it's going to reflect really well on the school. And it was just like the way it was worded, I was like, oh, right. So you want me to do well. So the school looks good. And it really rubbed me up the wrong way. So that's when I stopped trying in all of my classes and just about managed to pass five GCSEs to get into college. The, the sad thing about this, listeners, is you probably heard that story and you you had a moment of sympathy where you were like, oh, you know, everyone does stupid stuff like that in school. I, I've got, you know, I did the whole, like, I was top of the classes till year 11, got yeah. good GCSE results and then just fucked up A-levels and got barely anything. Yeah. But, like, the thing to remember with Liam, listeners, is... That story is sad if the person learns from the mistake. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but a common trend amongst Liam's sort of thoughts and ideas are that everyone is conspiring against him and everyone is doing everything for the worst reasons. So he has not learned from this. This isn't a story where Liam went, and that's why I then put myself to, you know, I worked hard. Liam's just like, no, the world is conspiring against me. To be fair, 
I I also like sacked off college just about past that. And the first year of uni, I was really shit at. But second and third year of uni, I got way into it. Yeah, it's because you're doing film. Yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> it was brilliant. I loved it. Um, I have one other like terrible teacher story for you. Okay. Which is just one of my favourite ever memories of of secondary school. I was in the top math class somehow. Now, I'm terrible with numbers. Because I was always like, I feel like... Right, this is just going to be like a blanket statement. Oh, okay. But I feel like people are either like attuned to like English or attuned to maths. There's very rarely crossovers. Right. I like mean, you have a passion for one or the other. It's, just a, bl- in it's my a blanket experience. statement because I'm good at maths but love writing. So yeah, it's weird. Okay, um, right, cool. It's maybe just me because I was I was shit at numbers. Um, no, to be fair, I, I do English. think that's uh, there is a co- like at least you know people do tend to pick one or the other as their like thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm very jealous of people that are naturally good at maths because, like, it was never presented to me in the right way. I don't think. Whereas too many in the numbers. Last of years. I th- well, I, I was listening to like a, I think it was like Neil deGrasse Tyson or someone who was saying that the beauty of maths is that it's it's this universal language. Like, yeah. every single language has numbers in it, and you can like communicate through that. Yeah, and also just like what you can actually then go on to do with maths, like you look at all of the space shit that's going on and how much of that is focused around math and all that sort of stuff. So, like, I think if it had been taught to me from that perspective at a younger age, I'd have been way more into it. Yeah. But I never could really understand, like, the point of maths when you had calculators. Yep, yep. Um, so, yeah, we had this maths teacher who I always thought looked a bit like Earthworm Jim. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, always had a problem. Yeah, had a BO problem very badly. Um to the point where, uh, because I moaned about it so much, at a parents' teacher evening, my mum raised it with the headmaster. God. Because I, we like, I love we your mum. To... You know I love your mum. I love your mum. <laughs> but you as her kid is like the worst case scenario for her. Because I, I can see that. Yeah. I can see you being like, Mum, he's so smelly. Tell on him. And her just being like, well, anything to... Anything for my my little boy? <laughs> I'll tell them. No, and just like no, no. going into their bed, like it's, it's it's more like anything to shut him up. <laughs> yeah, or that. Yeah, that's fair. Because it would be like it would be like I'd say, "Oh, mum, is this a good idea for Christmas? Should we buy him links?" Because obviously that's what teenage boys, you know. And mum would be like, "No, do not do that." <laughs> anyway, he was very old school as a teacher as well. He he wore like the blazer with like the elbow patches. Oh, okay. Um, was one of the only teachers that still used like a chalkboard. Oh, Everyone else by that point had gone to a whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, he'd written an entire lesson plan and then had to leave the room. And bear in mind, this was the top maths class. So like at least half the students were there because they loved maths and wanted to learn. The other half uh, decided to have a, a water balloon fight. Of course. Which erased the entire lesson plan yeah. <laughs> off of the board. He came back, he was furious, and then he would would not teach us until someone confessed to being the one responsible for bringing the water balloons in, which obviously no one confessed, no one wanted to dob him in. Even like the, the smart kids were just terrified of the kid that did yeah, it, so yeah. they didn't want to speak up. So we just had an hour long lesson of this teacher just getting more and more red and angry at the front of the class. Jeez. It was brilliant. And then we had a substitute teacher who someone stole her handbag and threw it out of a second story window and she left the room crying. I feel so sorry for substitute same, teachers. Yeah, same student got caught trying to smuggle acid out of the, out of the class, out of the science class. Oh, of course. That's horrifying. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to waxing. No, it's done. We had the waxing discussion. <laughs> It was very brief. I'm, yeah, I'm but I've curious. got other things to talk um, about. I don't particularly. This isn't. No, but I just nothing interesting happened about the I, waxing. I've got actual interesting stuff. I have another stuff. question. Oh, for fuck's sake, what Liam? Are you going back to have it done again? And if so, when? I yeah, I don't know. There you go. Isn't that isn't like supposed to be like a set amount? Of yeah, time she afterwards? said six weeks. That's a long time. Yeah, so I'll probably go back before then. I I can just about leave it four weeks before I'm like, oh, this has to go. Well, how many times have you been waxed now? 
three. So the fact that you're talking about it like you're some sort of seasoned veteran. Oh, I can barely stand four weeks before I have to go back to the waxing salon. Exactly. Such a well, once we move, dickhead. I'm going to have to find a new one. Yeah, the last very... one I went to. Yeah, yeah, because you'll be trying different ones anyway. It's not like you'll go back to the same place. No, I went back to the same place twice, and I went to a new one last time. Um, and I, I had an ear problem recently where for so- I'd, I just couldn't hear out of one ear for about four days. Yeah. Um, turned out there was fluid behind the eardrum, which just went away by itself. So that was fun. Um, I got there. I couldn't really hear her very well. I made Kat come in with me. <laughs> Fuck, it's still. <laughs> because, because, yeah, because I couldn't hear very well. I was like, Kat, do the talking for me because I can't oh hear what God. she's saying. And she, I, I heard her just about ask, um, is this your first one? And I was like, no, this is like my third now. And I think she said, of course, this isn't your first one. But it seemed like, literally, this is like one of our first interactions. So it seemed unreasonably sassy. Again, though, this but is one of those things. I don't know if I was things, just reading into it because I couldn't hear. This is one of those things. This is an exact example yeah. of one of those situations where your brain immediately goes, she was being sassy. And yeah. I've seen you do this with people yeah. where I've been like, no, they, they were, didn't sound like this at all. But your brain is just like... I can't think of any examples. <laughs> uh, the other day you, uh, on Twitter, had to call your girlfriend in to an argument about feminism because you thought everyone was picking on you because you weren't a feminist when in reality they were just having a conversation with you. Yeah. So there's an example. Yeah. Anyway. Jesus. Can I talk about what I've actually done? You... Yeah, but can I just finish by oh. saying this This new lady I went to was really good in Thavo and she, um, she did make me bleed in a couple oh of spots yep. but apparently that was okay. Yeah, you... And, yeah, you um, yeah. As long as it's not like yeah, pouring uh, blood. No, no. She just apparently she reckons she removed a skin tag. So, but then what? What was what was really impressive is she went around afterwards with some tweezers and just like tidied up certain areas, which I was quite surprised by. Yeah, I might see in my head that's worse than being waxed. Oh, I love being tweezed. Also, I also this woman made cat come over to inspect. <laughs> she was like, does that, yeah, because does that look because good to Liam, you? picture picture the situation where <laughs> cat walks in with you. You're like this sort of disoriented person just like yeah because you can't hear it. can't hear out of one ear so you're just like yeah it just looks like cat's some sort of abusive girlfriend who's like <laughs> get him waxed i hate his hair <laughs> accurate <laughs> oh my god it's a good thing cat doesn't listen to these anymore in all yeah honesty. probably but yes every single episode has been a cry for help fuck's sake no it hasn't <laughs> listeners liam's fine I'm in an abusive. No, you are not. Don't say that. That's something you should joke about. No, don't joke about it. It's not funny. She did throw punch me once. That's an actual thing that Ellie witnessed. She did, and it was hilarious. (laughs) One of my favourite moments in mine and Liam's friendship is when his girlfriend punched him in the throat. (laughs) It really hurt. I couldn't breathe. It was so funny though. I don't even remember what you did to deserve it. I know you did something, but I can't remember what. Did I try and tickle her or something? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe it was something yeah. like that. And then she just turned around and punched and... you straight in the throat. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Oh, so What good. would you like to talk about? Liam, this weekend, last weekend, when this episode yeah. goes up like two weekends ago, unless it's late, in which case yeah. it's maybe three weekends ago, who knows at this point, I went... A recent weekend. <laughs> on a weekend, I went to a stag do. And how was that? It was really good. We went... Who, who was getting married? My mate Ed. I don't know why you're asking that. Like, All right, Ed. <laughs> I don't know if he listens. Probably not. He, uh, we went to his stag do. We did go karting, yep. which that sounds. I fun. haven't done since I was a kid. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's let's do some go karting. I didn't do very well. I'll, I'll start by opening openly admitting that. I know why I didn't driver. do well because yep. I couldn't figure out. I don't know if you remember what go karting's like, Liam. You're on quite a small track in terms of width. Yeah. And the way you get ahead of people is by overtaking them, which is an essential part of go Or undertaking yeah, corners, just, right? Yeah, so long as you get ahead of them. Uh, the problem yeah, I yeah, had yeah. was I couldn't figure that bit of it out. I Oh, like there wasn't enough room for you to get around. You had, to be, you you had to be a little bit like not aggressive with it because the rule is like, you know, you're yeah. not allowed to ram into people. But like you had to sort yeah, of, yeah. if someone went a little bit too wide, you had to squeeze yourself into that gap so that they couldn't turn into yeah. you. And I just couldn't do yeah. that. Like I was like, 
I don't want to mess them up. They're having fun. So I feel like yeah. that's where I went wrong, was I was a bit too under-aggressive but in those moments. Is, is that... Is it typical, because I, I haven't done it since I was a kid, is it typical of go-kart, like, courses that they're quite narrow, or was it just the one you went no, to? No, I think they're... they're fair, I mean, it's, it was maybe, like, wide, it was wide enough for maybe... It was maybe, like, two and a half go-karts wide, the track. Oh, so okay. you could... You yeah. had space to overtake. It was just if you went on the outside of them, you had to go longer to overtake. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, the whole thing was really fun. I did shit. I came fourth to last out of everyone in the Grand Prix. That's pretty terrible. Pretty bad. Yeah. There were 15 of us and then maybe 10 other people. But uh, yeah. whatever. I'm fine with it because when the leaders had lapped me because I was behind all the slow people because I did a bad placing time, uh, I was able to keep yeah. up with the leaders for most of the race. So I was like, okay. I can do this. I just can't do the over-fucking-taking. So the moment anyone overtook me, I was like, yeah. well, I'm stuck behind you now because I don't understand this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a good okay. excuse. Wouldn't get me anywhere, but I just wanted to, you know. But uh, the weird thing about it was... We got there, so there's my group of 15, all getting ready, yeah. we're all having a bit of a laugh, uh, and then these yeah. five guys show up, maybe, th- was it three from one group and five from another or something? But they showed up, and they had their own racing gear, their own helmets, Right. Yeah. Yeah. and we were like, oh okay, these guys are like actual go-karters. They come here every weekend. Yeah, this is yeah. like, they're here to go-kart, they're not fucking yeah. around. So my group would, you yeah. know, driving around or normal, doing the racing, and... I noticed as I'm driving around, like you'd get someone behind you, one of these faster guys, the guys who were good, and they'd yeah sort of stay behind you for a little bit. Then they'd get a little bit aggressive in terms of like they want to overtake you. Then they'd get slowly more and more aggressive, like they'd start bumping you, and you're not allowed to. So I was like, right. well, this is ridiculous. Yeah, they're fucking go karters, and they're starting to like shove us. I saw them bumping into some of my mates. I saw one of them getting yeah. really annoyed that he couldn't overtake my mate. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is just bullshit. So I was getting angry. Everyone else is getting yeah. angry. Some of my lot started to get a bit bumpy back. People got the flags waved at them saying, you know, stop bumping. Oh dear. It all got a bit bumpy. Yeah. Then when we got off... Um... Uh, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go on. The go-karters that go there like a lot, were they like friendly with the people that, that worked there? So were they maybe being like given free passes, weren't being flagged no, down? No, or no, anything? it wasn't that. Nope. They, were, they weren't okay. particularly... I don't okay. think they go there every week. I think they maybe just go-karters like who go to different places and try and place in Grand Prix and get on leaderboards and yeah. stuff. Because, you know, there's, like, professional go-karting. Or, you know, sorry, prof- yeah, of course. whatever. But, uh, so we got off, and I was talking to people, and I was like, did you notice them? Were they starting to get, like, a bit bumpy with you? And, like, some of my mates like, yeah, no, seriously. Like, one of them just kept ramming into me. At one point, one of my mates got shoved into a wall, like, on the go-karting yeah. thing. Not afterwards. Everyone was fighting afterwards. There was no fighting. But uh, then one of, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. guys I was with went, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because did you not see the other flag they were showing our lot or he was like I, I got shown it and it was basically they had a little sign and what it said was you've got to let the race leaders pass which is the really fast right. professional go-kart guys they were the race leaders they were first because what you're meant to do Liam yeah is if you're bad and slow you're meant to yeah. let the really fast people who are setting good times and have a stake in getting good times at these sort of things you're meant to let them get past right. you yeah so it turns out that right. my group were getting more annoyed because they thought all these guys were dickheads and it turns out we were the dickheads Oh, it's one of those old Yeah, so stories. literally afterwards, all of us are going, people are going, oh, I was getting bumped so much. And then, like, slowly, more and more of us knew, and we're going, oh, no, uh, turns out we were meant to be letting them go past us. And people were just going, oh. But oh. the thing is, you should have been told that. Yes. Like, how are you to know that? One, we should have been told it. Two, if you're yeah. going to do, like, a professional thing where people give a shit about getting the times, maybe don't let them go on the same day as the group of 15 people on yeah. a stag do. Just possibly. Yeah, I agree with that. So, like, there was... Yeah. Uh, we we didn't feel bad. We were just like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be angry at them. Yeah, you learnt a lesson. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was good. But I'm in pain. The dickheads. Yeah, we're the dickheads. I'm still in pain. It's been a, uh, yeah. nearly a week. My shoulder hurts. Yeah, uh, um, apparently, so, throughout all of her life, my mum's had, like, really bad back problems. And she thinks she can trace it back to an experienced go-karting when she got bumped really badly. And she's literally, like, yes. to this day, sort of 30, 30, 40 years on, is still having to see, like, a chiropractor. Yeah. And it's all... It, it doesn't surprise me. It's because you're going so fast and, like, going around corners quickly, your body gets thrown around quite a bit. Even yeah. if you're not bumping into, like, crashing or anything, you're just, like... At the end, you when you let go of the steering wheel, yeah. you've inevitably done that thing where you're holding it too tight and your hands are cramped yeah. up. Like, everyone got off and was like, oh, my fucking hands. <laughs> I can't move them. Yeah, and then you have to, like, shake it all out. 
Yeah, they, they did a little, everyone shake it out, yep. shake it out. That's the way to do it. So what else happened on the stag, stag do? Uh, after the go-karting, yep. we went and had a couple of drinks in a pub. Yeah. Uh, the groom had about six. Wow. I think the rest of us had about one or two. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Well, yeah, you're meant to do. Yeah. Uh, the best man, who is a bit of a drinker and didn't quite understand his role, which I said to him at one point, I went, mate, you're not meant to be getting drunk. You're meant to be getting him drunk. Yeah. And he went, that's not fun. And I was like, yeah, but that is what we're doing. Yeah, that's that's the role of a best man. He wasn't great at that. But uh, we then went on to London Oktoberfest. Oh, which is like a beer festival, right? It's like the German Oktoberfest yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's you go to this big tent, yeah, which was in uh, Finsbury Park, which is in London yeah. for our American listeners. Uh, we might have listeners in Australia giant, like, or oh, right, other, right, other way in the world. Listeners from not London. Yeah. Uh, we you basically go in this giant fucking like circus tent thing where there are just rows and rows of tables, like you know when you see the like German beer hall yeah. pictures where it's just those tables all set up and long benches. Yeah. It was that. Uh, but the the problem with it is, German people that do it, yeah, are like German, and the people that were doing it here were English, yeah. And I imagine you've seen English people, Liam. You've met, a few. yeah, yeah, yeah. They like to drink a lot of them, yeah. They do, and they like to get a bit rowdy when they drink. Yeah, it's it's probably I'd so, say one of the biggest problems with this country. Yeah, and if you then give those people who are rowdy and drunk big one point five pint steins yeah. of beer they sort of chuck them around a lot yeah I can imagine that so everyone gets covered in beer which is not great no. and they push over tables and chairs yeah. people get hit by stools and shit it, it was uh, apparently there were a lot of fights which I somehow missed all of yeah doesn't surprise me but no it was uh, it was really fun but a bit weird don't know if I'd go back there if it wasn't for a big do yeah it's, in all honesty I it baffles me that alcohol in this country is kind of revered in the way it is, but something like weed is still like heavily demonised. Because I would much rather be out with it's a group of tradition. high people than drunk people. Yeah, but it, it is literally just from the past. That's why things are the way they are. Yeah, because weed got demonised and remains demonised. Uh, well, Canada apparently recently legalised it. So it's it's changing, but I don't think in this country it will anytime soon. I think it will eventually, but probably just medically. Yeah. I think that's where it will happen first, and then maybe it will branch out more. Who knows? Which apparently helps my eyes, so I might get some. Oh, you should do that. Well, we are recording a podcast that will go out on the internet. So Liam, what you meant to say there was I will not be buying any weed. No, uh, no if it eyes. gets legalised medically, oh, okay, I got can you. get some because it supposedly helps the eye problem that I have. Got you. That makes more sense. Yeah, there was a news article recently about some mum going mental because her like ten year old or eleven year old son was going blind, and she thought like the thing that would help is medical marijuana. So she was like lobbying to get her child essentially weed. That's a bit yeah. weird, but I mean, if it works, fuck it. Why? Why exactly? Why shouldn't she? So maybe they should hurry up and legalize it. Legalize. Um. I've never been to a snag do. I've been invited to a couple, but I was like, nah. So, um... Yeah, I mean... Were there any, like... Friend of the show, Mark, got married, right? Yeah. Oh, and I can did... imagine he would have invited you on his snag do. Did I go on that? I don't know if he had one, in all honesty. You must have. I, ca- I can't... Im- I can't see how you could say no to Mark. No, that's, that's why I'm thinking he didn't have one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm really... I don't think he had one. Um, but were there... Because he... Even if, even if you didn't like it, you would have gone to that, I Yeah, imagine. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Were there any like hilarious pranks played on the groom? Not really. It was quite like it was a lot. It wasn't calm because we were at a fucking October yeah. fest and everyone was dancing and whatever. But it wasn't like I think there's a stereotype of what stag do's are, and I've got a feeling that probably most of them don't go the way everyone thinks they yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. So like there wasn't anything particularly crazy in terms of like no one. The only prank that got played on him was at the go karting place uh, when we were all getting our suits. He went up to the thing and was like, "Can I get a?" medium or whatever yeah. and then the best man ran up and went uh no you've got a special one and then said to the guy i think his is the pink one and he pulled out this pink driving suit with learner written on the back which we were all like oh that's quite yeah cool. fair enough yeah i i don't know i mean it sounds like fun but also it's not like it was i would ever do that's right when i have my hendu liam i'll invite you and i'll find a brilliant excuse to not go 
we'll see. We will. Um, have you been up to anything else? No, that's my main stuff. How about you? I recently went to Bournemouth for like a family get together. Okay. So we. How was how was that? We've got like extended family who are like in their eighties who live in Bournemouth. So like every okay. couple of years, we try and get to go and see them. Um, so we spent like one sort of we went and had a Sunday roast with them but we also yep. got to Bournemouth like Friday evening and then just kind of we spent Friday night at a restaurant drinking because my family very British love a good drink yep now I don't drink a lot so no. I struggle keeping up with them um, and I was feeling it the next day but it was it was fun it was good uh, next day we went to a place called Swanage if you've ever been there <gasps> wait Swanage in Dorset uh, I don't know where it is down, down south. Yeah. Yeah, my my nan and granddad uh, used to live in Swanage, and I used to go to Swanage every year. We had to get, like, a little ferry thing across to it from Bournemouth, or from near uh, Bournemouth. Y- yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not on, like, a, a chain. Ferry. Yeah, yeah, the chain ferry, yeah. Fuck, yeah. yeah, I used to... We always used... I used to love the chain ferry when I was a yeah. kid. I used to call it the fairy, because I didn't understand the difference between the words. Makes sense. Um, the The... the Journey over there was fascinating. I didn't even realise it was happening because we were on an open top bus, which yep. so bear in mind this is October. We were doing this, right? Yeah. When we yeah, got on open the bus, top bus. When, well, this thing, when we got on there, the seats were all wet, so we wiped them down. By the time we got on the ferry, it was boiling hot. Oh right. It was like I don't know. I mean oh, yeah, if I do know. recently, yeah. Yeah. Like climate change is a thing that's definitely happening. And yeah, apparently someone... we're apparently we're out of the, the. This is now the official end of the heat wave. We're getting the Gulf Stream. Oh, I've been enjoying so it so much. Be though. Sorry, mate. It's going. This is bullshit. I, I reckon we're going to have a really bad winter because we've had such a good yeah. summer. That's what everyone's saying. So that's going to be fun. Anyway, Yay. um, so that the the ferry ride across on this open top bus, I was just completely distracted because in the car next to me, someone had locked themselves out and there was a dog in the car. So I was just watching this group of people desperately trying to get back into a car. Jesus. And this dog was the chillest thing ever. It was just lying yeah. there. Every now and again, it would like look up, see its owner and be like, oh, they're still there. <laughs> and then just lay back down. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, yeah. just so chill. Uh, and there were people like climbing on top of the car, trying to like get through like the, the what's the little window called in the roof? Uh, sunroof. That's the one. Trying to get through that. People were trying to like ram rods into the doors and pry the doors open. Jesus Christ. The annoying thing is, I don't know how this, this story ends because they still hadn't got in by the time the ferry ride was over and then we drove off yeah. on this bus. But it was fascinating watching it. Uh, then we went on a big walk to a castle, which was a shit castle. Corth Castle? I know, it was more like a coffee shop than a castle. It had a big stone globe just down some steps from it. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. I know which one you mean. Yeah, the big yeah. stone globe. I know yeah. exactly where that is. And yeah, that that isn't a castle, really. So you should have gone to Corf Castle. I I didn't know that was an option. Yeah, that's really close to Swanage, and it's it's still not is it amazing. Walking distance because but... mm. we were walking. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, we also did this like coastal walk, which I don't know if we were meant to do because we had to time our walks as the waves were coming in. <laughs> So there are like outcrops that you could kind of run to and stand on and then the waves yep. would come in and you'd have to run and stand on the next one, which... Yeah, that's know. a bad sign. You're, that's usually a sign that you shouldn't be on that path. But yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Um, yeah, That's shit, weird, man. Castle. It's weird that you were in Swanage. Yeah, I know. I, I quite like Swanage. Because that's, like, that's literally my childhood was summer, summer holidays in Swanage with my grandparents. I can imagine that'd be a lot of fun. It's, it seemed very like... The sort of place that would have been written about in like a a famous five book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, a v- just very like quintessentially British. Oh yeah, yeah. Swanage yeah. is definitely that. It's a proper yeah. little British seaside town. Yeah, um, but I really liked it. Um, then that night we went to this restaurant. That like one part of this this area was a restaurant. There was a big glass window which we were sat next to, and on the other side of that was a dance floor with a live band. All right. So we're there eating our dinner, and let me tell you, the ladies of Bournemouth know how to spend a Saturday night. We saw yeah. all sorts. We saw one girl put an inflatable banana between her legs, didn't realise that this was making her skirt ride up, 
for a long time and we just saw everything. Oh, God. All of her underwears. <laughs> yep. Uh, also, oh dear. really hammer time the point of... You know how, like, sometimes I can have a bit of a mean streak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns out sometimes. I get it from my family. This doesn't surprise me. Yeah, the comments that they were passing on some of the people that were dancing, I was messaging to Kat on Facebook at the time, just like, this is amazing, this is hilarious, also very mean. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, um, and then the Sunday, we had this Sunday roast with, with the extended family who were like 80, and then afterwards, like at the end of the meal, we found out it was the first time they'd left the house in about a year and they begged us to come back next weekend because they'd had such a good time and it was just like traumatic leaving. Yeah, oh, that's really sad. It was so sad. They were like, yeah. oh, they were like, oh we'll, we'll pay if you if you come back next next oh, weekend. No. And we were just like, oh, we've got plans and like things. So I, I think it'd be nice if we could maybe try and get back to them more often than like once every two years or something. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was nice seeing them, but also just like terribly tragic. Yeah, yeah. That's really sad if they haven't, like, left the house. Yeah. Well, like, one of them was, like, recovering from injuries and stuff. At, at one point, we'd finished eating, and my family were just swapping various injuries they'd had really loudly in this restaurant where other <laughs> tables were looking over. And, like, not like, oh, yeah, this is the nice, like, we're going to, like, be respectful of where we are and word this up. No. Like, oh, no, so then I had this blister that popped everywhere. <laughs> Like that level of yeah, yeah. I was kind of just sort of like, I wanted to apologise to the other people, but also I was just like, I don't want to be that person. I, I mean, this is explaining a lot about you, Liam. I think if you spent a weekend with my family, you'd be like one, just mortified, and two, you would have this like immense understanding. Oh yeah, yeah. I can imagine I would. Yeah. Um, and the other big news is me and Kat are moving house. I don't know if I mentioned it last time we recorded. I think we did. I think we brought it up. I'm yeah, we're now I've packed forty five boxes of films. They're of various sizes. Some of them are quite small in my defence. But okay. fuck me, it took a lot. Unless it's time. unless it's forty five shoe boxes, I'm not gonna have any it's sympathy not. for you. And it's even not. then <laughs> that seems it's like not. too many. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's it's it is too many. Um I'm currently just surrounded by boxes. Like, my life is just... I wake up, there's boxes everywhere. Yeah. I fill them, I put them somewhere, and it all starts again the next day. So when's actual, like, move day? Is it mon- Monday coming? Monday, we get the keys to the new place. Okay. Tuesday, the furniture all goes. Yep. And then on the Thursday, the place we're currently in is getting like professionally cleaned and having the carpets all done, which Kat's coming about to handle that because she's got to do a talk in town. Um, oh, and okay. that's it then. We had the keys back after that. And that's it. We're done with Chichester for the time being. No, forever. Stop latching onto Chichester like some weird limpet. I quite like it though. But we'll see how Basingstoke compares. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's my life. Fair enough. Very thrilling. Mm. 